1962, we were introduced to a pretty unbelievable film for that time. It was a Stanley Kubrick-directed film called Lolita, based on a novel by Vladimir Nabokov, who is also credited with writing the screenplay, although it was adjusted quite a bit, and the screenplay he did is not what you see on the screen. The film stars James Mason, Shelley Winters, Peter Sellers, and Sue Lyon as the title character. The film follows Humbert, who is a middle-aged literature lecturer who becomes sexually infatuated with Dolores Hayes, whose nickname is Lolita. The problem being, she's a young adolescent girl. James Mason was the very first choice for Stanley Kubrick and the producer for the role of Humbert but he initially declined this role due to a Broadway engagement that he was involved with. But he did recommend his daughter, Portland, for the role of Lolita. Lawrence Olivier was offered the part, and he refused it, apparently on the advice of his agent. Kubrick also considered Peter Ustinov, but decided against him. David Niven was then suggested, and he accepted the part, but then withdrew for the fear that the sponsors of his TV show, Four Star Playhouse, would object to him taking this role on. Eventually, James Mason withdrew from the play he was involved in and got this part. The role of Claire Quilty, played by Peter Sellers, was greatly expanded from that of the novel. Kubrick allowed Sellers to do a variety of things in the movie that he normally wouldn't do, including disguises and doing his dialogue ad lib. Early in the film, he appears as himself, a conceited playwright with a real superior manner. Later, he's an inquisitive policeman on the porch of the hotel, and then next, he's an intrusive Beardsley High School psychologist named Dr. Zemp trying to persuade Humbert to give Lolita more freedom in her after-school activities. He's then seen as a photographer backstage at Lolita's play. Later on in the film, he's an anonymous phone caller conducting a survey. It's said that Peter Sellers modeled his voice for the character of Claire Quilty on that of the director, Stanley Kubrick. And while the scenes were being filmed for any of the shots that Peter Sellers was in, Kubrick had two or three cameras rolling all the time. He wanted to get everything on the first take because of Sellers' inspired ad-libbing that he did. He used this technique to get views from all angles without losing the spontaneity of the scene. The iconic heart-shaped glasses, which you see Lolita wear, only appear in the publicity photos for the film. You never see her wear those in the movie. These are also on the cover of the album for the soundtrack. In the movie, she actually wears cat's eye sunglasses. When the film premiered in June of 1962 in New York, Sue Lyon was not allowed to attend the film. She was too young to see the film that she created. However, she was allowed to attend the London premiere at the Columbia Theater in September of that same year. Throughout the film, Lolita's mother and friends refer to her by the nickname of Lolita. But in the novel, Dolores Hayes' nickname Lolita was given to her only by Humbert. He was the only one that used that name. Her mother used the name Lo as an abbreviation of her real name Dolores. There were close to 800 girls that auditioned for this part of Lolita Hayes. Stanley Kubrick was scared to death the whole time that filming was going on because Sue Lyon would go horseback riding every day after the shoots were completed. He was terribly afraid that she would get thrown off a horse and damage her pretty face. He even told her if she gets thrown to land on her back. The cinematographer, Oswald Morris, had a major falling out with the director, Stanley Kubrick, while the production was going on. Kubrick was furious when images from the film appeared in the newspaper during the shooting. He blamed Morris for this because he was responsible for managing the rushes from each day's shoot where he felt like the leak originated. It was later discovered, though, that a junior assistant at the film processing lab had sold them to the press. 
The cinematographer said Kubrick never apologized to him for this accusation, and he vowed to never work for the famous director again. After Shelley Winters was hired for the role of Charlotte, Kubrick suggested that she read the novel so she understood the role even better. At that time, she was campaigning for the future president, John F. Kennedy. When Kennedy noticed that she was reading this book on the platform, he suggested that she use a brown paper cover to hide this title because he felt like it might jeopardize his election chances. Peter Sellers pretty much steals this film. He's amazing in it. And James Mason knew this as the filming of the picture was going on. He confided with his friends that had he known this prior to shooting the film, he would have insisted on playing Quilty himself. Now the girl that is with Peter Sellers' character has the name of Vivian Darkbloom, which is an anagram to the writer's name, Vladimir Nabokov. And in the novel, it's all based and set in the 1940s. But Stanley Kubrick decided to update it to contemporary times of the early 1960s. Just as in the novel, there are many double entendres and humorous references made, both verbal and visual. And this is done throughout the film. You almost feel like you're watching a Hitchcock film. A couple of such references happen when Humberg's first seen at the office of Lolita's camp to pick her up. The shot shows him standing there as all of these nubile young girls come in and out of the room. He stands there with a tennis racket in his hand in front of a stuffed beaver. And then you can't miss the name of the camp. It's called Camp Climax. Even further still, the name of Lolita's friend, who has been attending the camp since she was 10 years old, is Mona. The director originally wanted Joey Heatherton for this role, but Heatherton's father, Ray, said no to it. He feared that his daughter would be typecast as a promiscuous sex kitten, which basically happened anyway. Kubrick started considering Sue Lyon for this role after seeing her in the Loretta Young show. The one thing that convinced him to hire her was the fact that she was adequately endowed and appeared surprisingly mature for her age at the time. His reasoning was that her physical maturity would make Lolita seem older something he was really concerned with because of the censorship issues involved. In the novel, her age was 12 years old, and Kubrick had been warned that the censors were going to come unglued if that age wasn't raised up a little bit to about 14. It's kind of funny that the thing that they are usually trying to censor is parts of the female anatomy, but in this case, that's what backed the censors down. It was more of an age problem than anything in this film. Kubrick prepared for this film while he was shooting Spartacus in Spain. And in the opening scene of Lolita, when Humbert encounters the drunken Quilty, he asks him, Are you Quilty? And Quilty replies, No, I'm Spartacus. You come to free the slaves? This all being a reference to Kubrick's film Spartacus. The entire movie was filmed in England. Kubrick had a terrible fear of flying. And as he got more popular as a director, he demanded that everything be done close to his home. Even though the film is supposed to take place in the U.S., it's pretty obvious that what you're looking at is English countrysides and landscapes. The film premiered in June of 1962 in New York, and it performed fairly well, with very little advertising, relying mostly on word of mouth. The film was extremely controversial, though, because of its subject matter. Take a look back at this Kubrick film. He's an amazing director that works wonders with a camera. The subject matter itself is a little bit harder to swallow, and Kubrick actually stated, looking back on the film, that he probably wouldn't do it again. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.